The second reason is based on the stories we've actually heard from a real katana swordsmith working in Kyoto. I still would not purchase one from an overseas site. And welcome to Let's Ask Shogo. As a Japanese katana trainee who has been training for more than seven years now, I've made a lot of videos related to katana. So I often get many DMs through Instagram asking me, is this katana worth buying? along with pictures of katana sold on the internet. Most katana that people send me pictures of are the battle-ready ones sold on foreign stored websites. And every time I receive these questions, they trouble me. And the reason is because I personally would never buy katana from such websites. But why wouldn't I? So today, I will first explain about the legal definition of a katana in Japan. Then next, I will introduce the definition of a katana according to a katana swordsmith I actually met in Kyoto. By understanding these two points, you will clearly understand the answer to today's main topic. I hope this video will be useful for everyone who is hoping to buy a katana someday, both for ornamental and martial art training purposes. However, before we move on, please understand that this is just one opinion from a Japanese katana trainee, and it's not a representative opinion of any group. I struggled so much to make this video because I don't mean to deny the existence of any sorts around the world. Every form of katana has a purpose as long as there is someone who needs them. However, at the same time, there is an important message I want you to know. If anyone feels uncomfortable about my opinion, I apologize in advance. And after watching this video, please let me know in the comments about your opinions on how to choose a katana. In this channel, you can take a closer look at Japanese traditional culture, tips on traveling to Kyoto, and social problems in Japan. So learners and lovers of Japanese language and culture, be sure to subscribe to enjoy more content. So today's katana katana. Then, let me start by explaining the first reason why I would never buy a katana from foreign websites that sell swords. The first reason is actually very simple. It's because I legally can't buy it. In Japan, a law called the Swords and Firearms Control Law strictly regulates the handling of weapons. Possession of blades that meets the following conditions are illegal, except when it's required in the course of one's professional duties. One. Swords, spears, and naginata with blades of 15 cm or more in length. 2. Swords with a blade of 5.5 cm or more in length and flying knives with a blade that opens automatically at a 45 degree angle or more. Violating this law will have you imprisoned for up to 2 years or will cost you a fine of up to 300,000 yen. Wait, then how can anyone own a katana? Although it would originally be illegal, only those for which a special registration certificate had been issued may be possessed by anyone as a piece of art. However, no matter how much we call it a piece of art, there is no doubt that katana were originally blades used to slash people. Therefore, the definition of a katana for which a certificate of registration can be issued is strictly defined by law for security reasons. On the flip side, any sword that exists outside of this definition and is not issued with a certificate is not a katana but merely a weapon, no matter how much it looks like a katana and therefore cannot be owned legally. So a random person without a license cannot make a katana in his backyard, nor can you try to sharpen any Yaito. Then what are the circumstances of katana by Japanese law? 1. Made of tamahagane steel. 2. Fold forging and quenching are performed. 3. Beautiful appearance, hamon waves, and metalwork are recognized as a work of art. 4. Traditional characteristics of each swordsmith's style are clearly shown. These four are just part of the condition, and there are much more. Tamahagane is traditional steel artificially created for making katana, and it is only made in very limited places in Japan today. Folding, forging, and quenching are typical production processes of katana, through which a unique beauty such as the jigane and hamon 
are expressed. And since only qualified swordsmiths possesses these traditional katana making techniques that are a few centuries old, katana end up being very expensive. Unless you happen to get it on a very low price on an auction site, you will basically have to at least pay for about 200,000, 300,000 yen. For example, my katana that I used for my mat cutting training cost 650,000 yen. And asking a swordsmith to make a custom one for you usually will cost more than 1 million yen. Like overseas katana shopping websites, it is nearly impossible to obtain a sharp katana for as little as a few hundred dollars. You may feel that katana made in Japan are expensive, but I personally feel that it is a necessary price for safety and also to preserve the values of swordsmiths. However, I must make it clear here that even if it was legal in Japan to purchase such swords, I still would not purchase one from an overseas site. Let me explain why in the next chapter. The second reason is based on the stories we've actually heard from a real katana swordsmith working in Kyoto. I asked him about his opinions on katana look-like swords that are made overseas with non-traditional techniques. Then he told us about the definition of a katana that he believes in. According to him, there are three conditions for a sword to be called a katana. First is that it is sharp and capable of cutting. No matter how much katana are considered a form of art today, if it cannot properly cut, it has lost its original purpose as a sword, so it cannot be called a katana. Second is that it's beautiful. As I've explained earlier, the most attractive feature of katana is their beautiful appearance, including the jigane metal surface, hamon wave patterns, and sori curves. In other words, blades that are sharp but look awful cannot be called a katana either. So far, it may seem that the swords sold on overseas sales websites can also be called a katana. The third reason, however, is the most overlooked and at the same time, the most important. It is whether the sword is deified or not. Since ancient times, the katana has been worshipped as an offering to the gods or as the gods themselves, which comes from Japan's polytheistic beliefs. That is why katana are created beautifully in workshops with Shinto altars and using traditional techniques as a sign of respect for those gods. The fact that so many katana with a history of hundreds of years have survived in such beautiful condition is proof that people have treated them with courtesy and respect. In other words, it is not enough for a katana to function as a blade and be a little beautiful along the way. It must function as a deity. The culture of worshipping the katana can also be found in modern martial arts that have a katana such as Yado through the kore that is performed towards the katana. Now, the question that arises is, how can katana be deified? What is the difference between a katana that is seen as a god and one that is not? As an analogy, the swordsmith told us about the omamori good luck charms, which can be bought at Shinto shrines. A charm sold by a shrine maiden at a shrine you did your prayers at with your friends, and a charm handed to you at a factory where it was just made are exactly the same. But can you actually see these two charms as exactly the same? Maybe the analogy of a Shinto charm is difficult to understand. So let's change the topic to marriage rings. Even if the rings are exactly the same, there is a difference between the ring that you spent hours in a store talking with a sales clerk to select and buy and a ring that you just picked up off the street. In other words, if the katana was made by a swordsmith who overcame rigorous trainings and won the certification, there is a guarantee that it was made by using traditional techniques with the purpose of creating a sacred item. As I've explained earlier, the meaning of the katana as a deity is very important even when learning techniques to actually use the katana as a weapon such as yaido. Because what we really need to learn through yaido today is not the skill to cut people, but to treat things with care and to learn modesty through our attitudes towards the katana. To practice with a katana that cannot be respected as a god is to miss out on the most important aspect of what should be learned through the training of swordsmanship. There are many Japanese YouTubers too who use katana to cut meat, destroy objects, or leave them to rust and break 
without performing the proper maintenance. It is very unfortunate that even though this divine element of the katana has originally fascinated the world, this spirit is being lost in Japan as well. But once again, there is one thing that I don't want anyone to misunderstand. I do not mean to deny the existence of katana with only the first two conditions. Even in Japanese history, there were probably many people who treated the katana only as a weapon, which I totally understand. I also don't mean they must be in Japan or be Japanese to make katana either, no. There are many wonderful licensed or in training swordsmiths who are originally from a different country. What I talked about in this video is just again my personal opinion as a katana trainee in Japan. And I'm only answering this because there are many people who ask my opinions on this topic. I am proud of the fact that the katana itself is loved and sought by people around the world. Then lastly, today's conclusion. There are two main reasons why I don't buy katana from overseas online source shops. First, because it would be illegal in Japan due to the firearms law. Only swords with special registered certificates are considered katana, and anything that meets the following conditions are considered to be mere weapons. One, made from tamahagane steel. Two, fold forging and quenching are performed. Three, beautiful appearance, common waves, and metalwork are recognized as works of art. Four, traditional characteristics of each swordsmith style are clearly shown. Second, according to a katana swordsmith we met in Kyoto, the katana needs to have the following three requirements. One, sharpness. Two, beauty. Three, divinity. The third reason is the most overlooked and at the same time, the most important one. If the katana was made by a swordsmith who overcame rigorous training and won the certification, there is a guarantee that it was carefully made using traditional techniques. You may feel such katana are expensive, but I personally believe that it's a necessary price for safety and also to preserve the values of swordsmiths and their katana. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If this video helped you to deepen your understanding towards the katana, it'd be great if you give us a like to help us boost this video to more people. And please check out our sub channel and membership through the link inside the description box. Thanks again, and I'll see you in my next video. This video for me is one of the most most difficult videos for me to make. I want to emphasize once again, I know, I know many of you are say, probably thinking right now that Shogo, you've already explained it hundreds of times in the main part of the video, but once again, I want to emphasize that I'm not here to say uh, any bad things about other katana or deny their existence. I'm here to say that because I am an Iaido ka, a person who's training in Iaido, I need to have cert certain conditions for my katana to make my training meaningful. But that doesn't mean that all the other activities that you can do with katana, just displaying them, collecting them, doing cosplay with them, just holding on to them because it makes you feel really excited, those are all positive good things as well. So again, this is just me as a Yado martial art trainee. This is my, what should I say, criteria that I have to search for katana. And that's the reason why my needs and the products that are um, produced and uh, available do not match, you know, from, from the overseas websites. That's the only thing I'm trying to say through this video, yeah. So I don't want anyone to misunderstand, but through this video, I did want to clearly explain why I can't do it. I'm not just he sit here to say that, oh, because it's not made in Japan, it's not a real katana. No, there's tons of people who say that too, but I'm not that person. That's one thing I wanted to say. Also, one more very important thing that I wanted to say is that there are a lot of Japanese people who say that immediately, the moment that katana is not made from traditional uh, steel or traditional techniques or not made in Japan or made by a Japanese person, there are tons of people who just immediately say, no, that's not a real katana. No, that's not the right way to do it. I am actually against that too. We should absolutely admit that the traditional techniques have a lot of flaws. The traditional steel tamahagane has a lot of flaws. That's one point that we absolutely need to admit because it's really, really the old traditional style. There are much better ways and more efficient ways to do it. Much more efficient, stronger, much more flexible steel that exists today. We can make different you know, combinations of steel to make the katana even stronger. We could do that. So physically, it is, there are much better katana outside of Japan 
Yeah. As a, as a sword, as that kind of function, a lot of Japanese people need to absolutely admit that the, those katana are much better than the traditionally made and important katana. That, that's something that we absolutely have to um, understand and admit. I think that's really, really important. Yeah. Just because it's traditional and it's been done for hundreds of years does not absolutely make it better than everything. No. Again, this is just because I am in Yaidoka and th that's just because that is what I'm looking for. It does not mean that all of the katana made in Japan are superior or better. No, I'm not here to say that. And I want to tell those Japanese people, you know, the sell the say that says these things, you know, to katana that are made out of outside of Japan, that no, you really need to, with a fair mind, you know, you absolutely have to take a look at all of the other swords. And overall, I just want to say that. We all want to just simply have fun trading or looking at them or collecting them. So in the end, I really hope that everyone will be able to find the best katana that they wanted for a really long time.